All right, we're back with Logan and Nasty, and we're going to talk about how we use Model Builder to solve the same problem. And, and I know for me, when going through the, the classical steps we did earlier, a nine-step process, and you, you're at step seven and you realize you chose the wrong buffer size, well, now you're out of luck. you got to start from the beginning and go through. So, so Model Builder, I think, has been pretty intimidating for a lot of people, thinking, well, I, I just don't want to take on this new tool. But it really uh, helps you put commands in a sequence and, and let things run. So um, what has been your experience in using Model Builder? And, and what was your experience in, in running on using this project with Model Builder? Generally positive experience. Um, I think Model Builder is the perfect transition from the, the traditional GUI to a code-based automated process. Um, you still have the user interface, you still have the graphics to help, and in a lot of professions we use flowcharts to really conceptualize a procedure and the model builder interface really follows that so it, it's all intuitive it's linear and in, in, in how you're reading the model left to right the the graphs within it have a, a meaning so the green box means something the blue circle means something these are all indicators that help you while you're building your model compared to um, you know coding will be really dependent on the compiler that you're using, right? So I think it's I think it's a really good transition for those that are comfortable with the GUI and want to learn some process automation, like you're saying, I messed a step up, now I gotta start over, or hey, I want to change that buffer from three to five to ten. You can just change a parameter now. Yeah, right. So yep. Yeah, I use Model Builder a lot. Uh, I don't do scripting too much, but I do use the Model Builder a lot. And even in your videos, you have to go and change a buffer. You just did it and it's done. Uh, otherwise, you will need to repeat all the steps. You will perhaps will need to have a log going along the way, which step you were on and what happened then. But Model Builder is kind of keeping all this information. Yeah, Model Builder becomes you. your log, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. It has it all together. You just have to click on it and repeat uh, the step again. So I think it's very, very useful user friendly also speaking of experience it's also deliverable if your client needs it mm -hmm. and they want to run it for themselves you can pack it and perhaps they will have a better chance to rerun it rather than script yeah. if they don't know the scripting they don't understand what's saying they won't understand it but they see as the login said everything has a meaning once they look at it a couple of times they will be able to rerun it themselves and change those parameters i know we had to deliver a couple of projects with the model builder so the user can rerun it for themselves later when the data changes or the command changes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. one of the things I really liked doing in the video was fun when, when we moved from that straight line Euclidean distance to a network analysis. It's like that's a really big step, but it only required deleting one little step and sticking this one in and then everything up before that and everything afterwards just worked, right? Mm -hmm. So you have this really complex thing you're doing. And it just required one one new tool to just get stuck into the model, which, which I really like. I also like when something does not run, it lets you know where it's stuck. So if something is wrong happened there, you can just double click and see what's going on. Maybe you just rename something that you were not supposed to or uh, something, the data gets screwed along the way. It's very vis visual to see where it happened. Yeah, and again, we, you know, we, we dealt with uh, one, three and five miles, but if you really wanted to tax the system, you could do 10 miles, but then just walk away, right? Yeah. With the GUI, you're just sitting there, like, I gotta wait for this to be done so I can run step seven or step eight. This is just hit the button, walk yeah. away, and, and you come back when it's done. Right. Uh, now, I know, Logan, you've done a lot, you know, this is really a basic model. We built some parameters, built a tool so it looks like an ArcGIS tool, but you've done even more with Model Builder in some of the more sophisticated things you've done with, let's say, like LiDAR processing. Yeah, um, again, it's, it's a good transitional tool between the GUI and, and coding, so when I, you know, I, I was self-taught in Python, but to get to that point, um, there are a couple of things I really wanted to learn, which were building script tools, and and we'll talk about Python in that regard. But to go from a model builder to a script tool, um, there's Python in the back end, right? So we can build complex models and look at how that code is is running that model and start to manipulate that. But um, adding things in like iterators, right? So if I have to if I have to run through a process that's going to manipulate a raster data set, um, that's great to run it run it in the model and have that procedural component broken down into um, something that's repetitive. But now I need to repeat that repetitive process fifteen thousand times, right? Yeah. So I can throw all my raster data sets into a file folder, 
and then iterate through raster data sets and, and write a variable within the model that says, you know, if, it, if it's a DEM, run this procedure. Um, I can have the output name just percent name percent, so it's going to hold on to the original name of that raster data set and then iterate through every data set within that file folder. So there's a lot you can do with models. Um, yeah. You can add parameters, so like your buffer, um, if you start adding parameters within the model, instead of having someone open the buffer and say, it's two, it's five, it's 10 miles, you can actually create a geoprocessing tool from the model builder and then just have one of those parameters say, okay, ask the user, prompt them for a uh, distance and entry. So yeah. then they can type that in. And then they're not even looking at the model at that point. They're just saying, okay, here's your input data, here's your parameters that I'm calling to the user, and then kick out your final data set, which is, it's really game changing. Yeah, it, it is because when you think about a, a person who's not a programmer, you, and we show this in the video, you're building a tool that just looks just like an ESRI tool. Right. right? It, it, that's like what the buffer tool looks like, but now it's this vaccination tool. And we can enter help files, we can enter all kinds of other things. So it, so it takes a person with maybe a limited technical skill set to produce really outstanding looking, an outstanding looking application. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And any, you know, so, but again, even after listening to you guys, I think people are gonna be like, yeah, but it's a little scary. But what would your, what would your advice be to someone who's building a model? Well, if you have these seven steps that you're doing every time, uh, try to make them in a uh, model one tool at a time. Yeah. Just try to start with the first one, connect to the second one, and you. Or what do you know? A couple hours later, you will have maybe less even than that. You yeah, will yeah. have everything ready. And right, you'll have it ready, and you can again, you can give it to people, and, and, and really, you've got to go through the process anyway with the GUI. Yeah. Right, you got to run that command, the join command. You may as well just take the tool and just slide it right in, and there it is. And then you run that once, yep. and you got the one command done, and you move on to the next. Um, so you should be able to work through this pretty easily as you follow along with the videos. And, and so good luck in using Model Builder to solve our problem.